Hey all, Blake here with another video and recently, fortunately or unfortunately, I caught this here in this little API test tube and it is one of the worst pests that you can find in your aquarium so hopefully you don't but let's talk about damselfly or dragonfly nymphs today. Let's jump straight into the video. So damselfly or dragonfly nymphs are the juvenile forms of the adult uh, damselfly or dragonfly that you've probably seen buzzing around your local wetlands, ponds or any body of water. Really. These nymphs hatch out, uh, there's a couple of different ways. So the first way is some damsel slash dragonflies uh, lay eggs in a bit of a jelly-like sac similar to pond snails or other pest snails if you've seen those and others actually inject them into the stalks of aquatic plants. After they hatch out, they'll have this nymph form for actually up to five years. So they will live fully aquatic for quite a long time before they have their last uh, shed and then turn into the insects that uh, exit the water and start to fly around. These nymphs can get between about 1.5 centimeters or half an inch all the way up to three centimeters for damselflies or just over an inch or, and up to six centimeters for dragonflies or you know, Two and a half inches and whilst they're actually a really scary pest to have within an aquarium environment they're actually great for the ecosystem they do a great job in controlling mosquito population and they're a great food source for larger predatory fish as well during one spawn an adult damsel slash dragonfly can actually have about 100 to 1500 eggs which is kind of a scary thought so if you do find one of these guys in your aquarium definitely keep an eye out for more because it's extremely unlikely that there'll only be one. To distinguish the difference between the two, dragonfly nymphs are gonna be a lot larger. They're way better predators and they have a thicker body on them. I will put some photos on the screen as well so you can tell the difference uh, in a more visual way. This one here, I've luckily enough found a damselfly larvae which are a lot smaller and are not as bad news. Whilst they will still take out plenty of shrimp and baby fry, these guys are not as great of a hunter as dragonflies. A fish really has to swim right by them to be able to be taken out. Throughout this video as well, I'll show some footage of this damselfly nymph eating some baby brine shrimp just to show the hunting action. And it's quite interesting, the actual mouth uh, shoots out kind of like a frog's tongue or something like that. So that's kind of how they hunt. They're very good at camouflage and they're very tricky to find. So they'll lay in wait, wait for something, a little shrimp or something to travel past their mouth and then they'll shoot their mouth out and hunt it down. So how did we get these damselfly or dragonfly nymphs in our aquariums? Well, generally they come in in a few different ways. First of all, they'll come in in eggs in uh, plants. As we discussed, they inject the eggs into the stalks of the plants, some types of damsel or dragonfly larvae. So they might have come in with a new plant order or even an old plant order. Another way is if you feed uh, live food such as mosquito larvae or daphnia, then one of these flies might have laid their eggs in that water that you're culturing or that the person who you bought them from is culturing in. You've unknowingly taken those eggs in that water and then put them into your aquarium and they've hatched out. The third way, which is generally more unlikely, is that whilst you've been working in the fish room or had a door open, a dragonfly or damselfly has flown in, quickly laid their eggs and hopefully flown out but uh, generally that doesn't really happen. It's, it's more common from especially plants and live food. So when we try to remove these little predators from our tanks, especially shrimp tanks and fry tanks, it's actually a really difficult thing to do because they are extremely hardy. They're tolerant to temperature, high temperature, low temperature, swings. There's not exactly a chemical that will wipe them out that won't wipe out everything else in the tank as well. So there's a few ways, but there's unfortunately no surefire hit that will guarantee wipe out all of these nymphs in an aquarium if you want to maintain the livestock. The first bet is if you see one, definitely manually remove it through siphoning or netting it. They're not that quick because they're definitely ambush predators. So if you do have a fine net, you can quite easily net them out or siphon them out as well. But the trouble with that is obviously we don't know how many there are in our actual aquarium. So this can be a bit of a difficult task. Because of that, you have to be really diligent in checking regularly, moving things around and sort of making sure that we don't have any sneaky ones hiding around the place. But we can never be too sure of that. 
So outside of manual removal, the only chemical option we really have is planarian medicine. It's a bit hit and miss, but some people do report uh, success ridding some types of damsel or dragonfly nymphs with uh, planarian medicine and snail medicine. Obviously, if you've got snails, it's going to wipe those out. And some of them as well are pretty detrimental to shrimp colonies. So just be mindful of which ones you use. There is one more really risky opportunity to rid ourselves of these pesky little critters with livestock addition. So some bettas and some goldfish do eat them. But the trouble is, is that especially goldfish and most of the time bettas will also eat shrimp and definitely fry as well. So uh, it's kind of a very risky move. But some, sometimes if you have a real disastrous issue with these little uh, critters, then it might be the only option we have left before bombing the tank entirely. So the three things people do when all is lost, the shrimp population is probably decimated, there's nothing left in there. Then what we do is you can either increase the temperature to 38 to 43 degrees Celsius or 100 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which is obviously crazy to think about. And any anything remaining in the tank will die with it. It'll also have a really bad effect on plants and other things like that. So it's really a method that's just gonna bomb the whole tank. That's where we're up to at this stage. Another one is you can put a cup of salt for every gallon. So heavily, heavily salt the aquarium. And the last one, and probably the most difficult one to sort of uh, go out and get, is you can dose the aquarium with copper sulfate. You wanna be really, really careful using copper sulfate, especially if you ever intend to restock the tank again, you're gonna make sure that it's certainly cleaned all the way down. But uh, yeah, some people t use that as a very, very last resort. So we've heard the disastrous effects and that it's really, really difficult to get rid of these guys once you do have them in your aquarium. So what are some preventative measures that we can do before getting them in there in the first place? First of all, definitely limit the amount of live foods and give them a thorough check over before you do feed them. It might be a good idea to feed live foods within a controlled environment. Another thing is to quarantine and pre-treat plants before adding them into the aquarium to rid ourselves of these eggs. So you can do a salt dip or a medicine dip. However, the safest method, the most foolproof method is to actually uh, quarantine your plants out of water. So plants are gonna be perfectly fine out of water, but nymphs and other pests most likely aren't. So what I like to do is if your plants arrive in a fish bag, drain all the water out of it, make sure you drain all the water out of it. Otherwise there is potential that a little nymph could stay in a droplet for a while. Uh, close the bag up, fill the bag full up of air and then just rubber, rubber band the top. So you create sort of basically a greenhouse environment. The plants will go perfectly fine in that human environment and a lot of suppliers actually grow them that way in the first place. And they can be like that for however long you like really, up to a week. That will make sure that any eggs have dried up, nymphs have dried up and so forth. So that is the perfect way I think to do it. And it's going to be far less harsh than salt dips, copper dips and uh, medicine dips as well. And the last one is if you do often have open windows or you think that there is a slight risk of a damselfly or a dragonfly flying by the top of your aquarium, well, you can make sure that you have tight fitting lids on the aquarium so that they can't enter the water in any way. That will certainly solve the problem of them being able to access it to actually lay their eggs on. It might be a good idea as well if you start to notice your shrimp populations to decline, to take out some of the population being very, very careful to only take out shrimp, keep them in a separate tank off to the side so that if it does get to the disastrous point, you can at least have a backup colony of your favorite shrimp to try and rebuild from. Mother nature can be a really tricky thing to navigate around sometimes, and especially when you've got really, really highly evolved predators like these guys, it can make keeping your simple aquariums a difficult task. So I sincerely hope that you guys never ever have to deal with this unfortunate aquatic pest. If you do, I wish you all the best of luck with reading them and hopefully that you can do so promptly. If you like this video, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. Other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.